we're back on the Pontiac today. As you can see, I got it all cleaned up and painted. Got the ceiling surface all cleaned up. And I pulled the seals and bearings, axle bearings out, and checked the pinion bearing, and it didn't sound good. So I pulled it apart, and the inner race was toast, and the race that goes in the housing was getting there. So I've decided to replace those. So like everybody else, watched a bunch of YouTube videos and bought a kit with Timken bearings. We also got new, there's some around here, bearings for the outside, new shims, got the whole kit. So we are going to attempt this. So if you don't see this, it didn't work, but uh, I don't think it would be a big deal. I got my little torque wrench. I got a bearing that I hollowed out. So that's just a slip fit over here. So I'll check out the sim, shim and start putting it together. Well, I made a little bit of progress. I got the pinion bearings, bearing races installed and torqued. So I used my little bearing race tool to install that. And there's the car. We made this fixture that everybody shows on the internet to hold the flange. And then a couple of breaker bars and I got the bearing preload set with the old bearing or excuse me the old crush sleeve and the old nut because those are one-time units used so once I get these set correctly um, the shim that was in it was 27 and a half to 28 thousandths and the closest I got in the kit was 29 so we'll try that out and see how it goes but it's lunch time so Time to have some lunch, but so far, making good progress. Well, according to what I read on the internet, that looks about right. So I have my backlash at about eight thousandths, and that looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see it. Camera my hands in the way. And we have good, good wear pattern on this side to the coast side, so I am happy with that. So I'll go ahead and change bearing out, put the crush sleeve in, new crush sleeve in, put the new nut on, and torque it down. So it's the end of the day. We've got the new big pinion bearing in with the correct spacer, the one that we used before. Uh, put new crush washer in, new seal for the pinion, and the new nut with a Loctite on it. Then I went and put the same spacers back in, check the backlash. It was within a thousandth of where we were at before, so eight to nine thousandths. Gear pattern, which I'm going to check some more tomorrow when I'm a little bit more awake. Oops, lost my light. But uh, right now, it doesn't look too bad at all. I think that's how it swoops. There you go. So it's supposed to look according to all the pictures online. So I checked these spur gears out. Make sure the spider gears were good. And I think we're ready to go back together. So I have to do a little bit more cleanup work on the Rupan cover and I've got C-clips coming in so I'll wait for those to come in. I've got some oil coming in, some good red line oil. And probably tomorrow I'll put the axle shaft bearings in and seals so everything's ready to go once the oil and C clips come in. So, besides that, ready to go. It's been a little time this morning. Put the rear axle bearings and the new seals in and just dump a little rear end oil on the bearings and spun them around, make sure they're pre lubed, and did the same thing with the seal. So that's all finished. Then went and grabbed the backing plates for the rear end that pulled the brake shoes and got some parking brake shoes because they were bad. So we got those straightened out, kind of, and washed up. So we'll scuff those up, put a little bit of paint on them. 
on the outside and get those ready to go back together. I well, decided to get the uh, caliper mounts, rear caliper mounts, and the shields, the old rattle can restore. And while those are drying, I went ahead and mounted all the painted pieces to hold the rear axle in place. So they're just, bolts are just snugged for now. I uh, should have the C-clips tomorrow. And once we get those, we can slide the axles in and put tires on it. So right now I'm trying to get the backing plates on, get the uh, emergency brake shoes on, and get the, all that stuff back on there. So everything's ready to slide the axles in, which are here, um, hopefully Saturday or Monday. This is kind of muted out, but this is what everything looks like. From inside the car, well, we can still see it. So yeah, bolts are too long and too short, and, but we got everything with a nut on it, so that should be good enough to transport for two blocks. But here, pretty soon, the rear end and rear suspension will be complete. We got that task done. So we got new shoes installed. Those are for the parking brake. So this is, if I'm correct, this is the passenger side. And that's the driver's side. So I pulled the hardware out of the bag and we'll put this together real quick. And there we go. So we have the rear backing plates, caliper mounts, parking brake shoes, brace brake shoes, whatever you want to call them, all installed, torqued down. And while I was at it, I went ahead and put the front struts in coil over it actually and hooked up the rack so theoretically all I have to do is get some wheels and tires which I have it to my other shop and as soon as the C-clips come in fill it full of oil we can move it actually I'll probably just put a quart of oil in the rear end I think I got two quarts so we'll go ahead and get C-clips tomorrow Put those in the axles, button the rear end up, put it on the wheels, and get it touching the ground for the first time in almost three years. Well, we've stepped forward a little bit. So we've got the axles in, the, the rear differential cover on, the C-clips in, everything bolted up so the rear end is done, that I know of. Um, got about two quarts of fluid in it, waiting for more to come up come in tomorrow. So that is all finished and the wheels roll now without hitting anything. So I think that is about the biggest tire diameter wise you can put on there. So that's a 235-60R15. But it sits exactly how we wanted it so that is basically a ride height. And I'm happy that we've got basically equal spacing front and rear. And we have the front suspension. So the Miata front wheels are on right now. And I think the next step is to set it on the ground. Well there we are. And I was just thinking back. Today is August 18th, 2020. And I think, because I'm slow, it's been three years to the day since the car was dropped off. So I pulled the alignment system off the bottom yet, the bars and everything, which I'll do here in a minute. But I checked the ride height, and the front is seven and a quarter, and the rear is hmm, seven and a half. You know, these of course aren't the right tires and tire diameters and stuff, so we can play with that, and we can play with coilovers. So but I think right now, that's pretty good and I guess I'm so used to this being up on the stands for so long this thing sits really low but I guess that's what you want at least that's what we want so I'll uh, get the bars and stuff cut off, off, off the bottom so it's easier to get on the trailer and get it ready to move well 
there we have it. So there we go. The little mounts that mount to the rockers are still there. But uh, it's a lot easier to do once it's up in the air in the other shop. And I'll clean those off because I plan on getting it up in the air and possibly putting it on my twirler or rotisserie and to finish the welding up. That'll make it a lot easier to get those off. But uh, she's low. I guess I've been so used to it being up in the air for so long that this is a big difference. But anyway, nothing creaked and popped or made any noises when I took it down and everything settled on the suspension and of course it's very light right now but uh, we'll fix that soon. It gives you an idea. Maybe you can see the tires. But uh, those are 235s. We're going to go 275 to 295s on the rear. So we'll add a couple more inches inboard. But uh, I like the way it sits. So we'll get everything ready in the new shop to take it over and hopefully by the end of the week it'll be in its new home. Well here she is moving from her lair so I'm going to try to get this on the trailer uh, so I'm not going to videotape it. I'm going to focus on what I'm doing and I'll show you when it gets on there. Now it's all tied down. It's not perfectly straight on the trailer but that's okay. It's only going a block and a half. So there's some daylight for it. Daylight on the roof, actually. So it's the first time in a while. And it's pretty solid. We're going block and a half. So let the Odyssey begin. Now it's safely in its home now. So I actually found a decent use for those cheap Chinese dollies. It doesn't have an engine and transmission in it. It actually worked pretty well. So I was able to move it in here myself. So as you can see, now we got plenty of room. Plenty of storage. It's right next to the fab shop. And the welder. And the plasma table. And all the shelves for the parts we're going to use. So. I'm just going to keep these shelves open just for the project that's actually in this bay right now. So, been a lot of cleaning and picking up this week and organizing and getting rid of cars. And so, I got one more to get rid of. I got a solstice that's I got to take the dash and steering column stuff out of. I have a engine and a six speed, it's just a four cylinder LE5. EcoTech for uh, another project. So it's here till it's done. So I've been curious with all the big tubing I've been putting in the car. So I kind of wanted to put it on scales and see where we're actually at. So it currently has fuel tank and straps. Of course, full rear suspension without sway bar. Rims and tires. Front suspension, of course it's got strut, or the coilovers and everything. No steering column, but it does have the rack, so it moves around. No sheet metal, no doors. does have the rear hatch. So, I was pretty surprised. So hopefully you can see that. There it is. Total weight, 1,338 pounds. So I'm not upset with that at all. So I think when we add the engine transmission, that'll get it close to 2,000, 2,100 pounds. And then, you know, as we add stuff from there. But um, we can keep it under 3,000 pounds. I want to be very happy. Back working on the Pontiac today. So I put the uh, engine transmission in and put some plumb bobs on it. So I could line up the engine, transmission, and the rear end. So I know we're offset about a half an inch to the passenger side. So the headers are a touch close, but uh, fortunately I have about a half inch to three quarters of an inch in here. This rolls out. So we'll just clear that a little bit. 
you can see. Let's transmission in. And what we're working on is a steering column mount. So what I did was just took a, I think it's an inch and a half, had it laying around, eighth inch wall tube, and I tacked it in. So I had the steering column sitting in here before, make sure everything would fit. And I put it in the strongest part so it's going to match up where we're both doors hinges are so if it gets hit in the side we get a lot of more strength here and of course when I removed most of the Miata firewall stuff I removed my Miata firewall mounts so we're going to have to make something to fit so we got this all tacked in clearanced around the glove box support the next thing I'll do is set the steering column back in here and show you what my planes are so we're back at it again this morning. I've mounted the power booster in the firewall so that I could mount the brake pedal assembly, which comes with the throttle pedal. And that bracket also has the mounts for the steering wheel. I can get my fancy pointer here. So they mount up in here. So I'll probably have to bend this bracket a little bit because it's not quite per mounting perpendicular. I think it's, you know, the Miata sat lower. But I've got it all set up. And then I've measured a couple of my vehicles and saw that the seats were six and a half to seven and a half inches from the steering wheel to the seat. So that's pretty close. But um, we're going to make it adjustable for a while so that we can um, get everything to fit right. So what I'm going to do now is start taking measurements up between the mount here and that bar that I put in. So we can make some temporary mounts and at least get the design started so when uh, Bubba the owner shows up we can adjust from there. So I'll show you more when I get some design work done. I'm hoping you can see this. So this is, I just modeled in here, inch and a half bar. Then I made a couple plates and the bottom plate that also the steering column. So like I've done in the past, I've uh, put some slots in the bottom so everything keys together. And let's see what those look like. So here are the three pieces as it sit in the, would sit in the car. So this would be the front of the car, this would be the driver. And then these key into the slots. And then those slots here are for the inch and a half bar. And then I put a hole. So if we want to run wiring or anything through, just lights them up a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is test them on the car. So we have prototype number one, all mocked up and in place, so I'm quite happy with that. For the first mock-up, but I think what I need to do, we've got about, I don't know, 350 thousandths here that we have to move, and the bolts are a little bit of an angle. So I think I'm going to move that plate this way, about probably half an inch. So since nothing's welded together, we can just remake the plate and try it again. But uh, for the first try, I think that's going to work really well. Well, there you have it. Took, let's see, two bottom plates and one set of sides to come up with this. So there's a couple of variations on it, but uh, I'm really happy with this. So everything fits the way I want it. I've got some adjustment, it's hard to see, but there's adjustment in these screws here. So the column can go um, back and forth a little bit, maybe three-eighths of an inch, half an inch. But uh, besides that, 
Everything's working out really well. So I think what I'll do is take these off and tap them. So I'm going to tack the side plates to the bottom plate here. So tack these two together and put them in there and see if Bubba likes it. From there, we'll keep moving forward. Show you more. So there it is, all tacked together. It's got four tacks on each upright. So the upright is mounted to the plate that bolts to the steering column. And it is just held by gravity up on the crossbar. But besides doing a little bit of alignment and sliding it over, probably a quarter of an inch to the passenger side, just to make it center up better on the seat. But um, we'll let the owner try it out, Mr. Bubba, see how it fits him, and then we can start tacking things in place. So it's Saturday morning. Um, got a text last night, Mr. Bubba's not feeling well. So I thought I'd kind of give him an update of what the shop looks like because he hasn't been here a month or two. So kind of see the updates, what I've been working on besides this car, and uh, give him an update on the car and where we're moving forward for. So he has something to uh, sit at home and watch while he's recovering. So of course, new pallet racks. This has got uh, eight LS engines on the bottom and then what I'm trying to do is organize everything so all the coil packs and throttle bodies and starters ECUs, wiring harnesses and then of course up on that next shelf is the um, intakes or wiring harnesses a couple pallets full of um, transmissions of different types so this engine here is the one that's going in Bubba's Astri. And then this is in a project, this is a 4L80E. This is going in a project I'll show you in a minute. And that's a Suburban I've had for about two years that I bought for 500 bucks. Key, if you're going to do this, look for a complete vehicle. That's actually a drive-by wire with 265, 265,000 miles. But, um... I drove for a year and a half and it's just getting to the point now where it needs brakes and ball joints and I've got another vehicle coming that I'm going to put the, that engine transmission for myself. So I call this the prototype serial number one. So this is my second Pontiac Le Mans. It's a four door, but it's got a, when I got it, a 140,000 mile 5.3 out of a Suburban with a 4L60E and this is kind of what I taught myself on. So this has been in the car five, six years now. It's got about 20,000 miles on it. And it's dry by cable. Over there, which I'll show you more later, is my very first car, my 65 Le Mans four-door. Or two-door, excuse me. I've had since 1983. And it's going to get duplicated like this one. So this is a 1969 F100 short box. Um, originally bought it in 93-94 and um, put a Mustang two front suspension under it and it had a 429 so we built a 429 and C6 and my dad came down I think in 95 and saw it and had to have it so he basically finished it did all the painting on it and, and everything else the interior and then his health started failing so uh, I bought it back from him and then, you know, I can't leave anything alone, so I went with the latest trends. Um, it's got a Ford Explorer 8.8, .8, 373 limited slip with disc brakes. That's all been going through. As you can tell, the front wheels are different. It has Crown Vic front suspension swap. And, yes, I have a problem. So that's uh, another 5.3. That one's about 130, 140,000 miles with a... 4L60E, aluminum radiator, so when I need a break, I work on something for myself. This is my project while I'm doing others. So I tried a couple different ways to adapt the later model Ford steering column automatic shifter to the 4L60E and, you know, the push rod version and everything else, and I just wasn't happy with it. So I'd taken a powder Suburban that I bought for 400 bucks, and I thought, well, it's 
cable operated shifter and this one's got a this engine has the um, drive-by-wire so I thought why not just use that column so this is a little project I do on my side time so I made some brackets underneath and a mount which I had to clean up so now it has a 2000 Chevy so or Chevy Suburban they're all the same steering column and yes Well, you can see that or hear that the shifter shifts the transmission and I will have cruise control just have to lengthen the wires and find something for steering wheel so I don't have to have the big hole where the airbag was but uh, that's my little project for now and I purchased that solstice for the uh, LE5 four cylinder Ecotec with a six speed for another project and it came with some beautiful seats. I think the car's only got 65,000 miles on it totaled, but um, seats are in good shape. So I think those are going to be very nice. They sit really nice, and they're going to fit really nice in the in the 69 Ford, and so that's why they're sitting in the back here. So that'll be done as soon as I get the steering column done. So here we have a good friend of mine's 1967 Firebird convertible. So we're going pro touring with this one also. A lot of work that's going to go in on that, but it should only take a couple months. Um, this one will have a 6 liter 4L ADE. You saw the uh, transmission I showed you earlier. Put frame connectors in it and um, AC, new wiring harness, all kinds of fun things. So we'll start working on that one here in the next month or so. So this is where we're at with the Astri and the shop organization. So yes, it's a little messy right now, but I'm trying to pick up after myself. So got things organized, specialty tools, and then these two shelves are pallet racks are for the upper stuff is my 65 Le Mans stuff, some BMW parts, and then all my bolts and special things I take to the racetrack and seals and stuff that's small and needs to be organized so I started putting that's the stuff I take to the racetrack for the race car so I got all the exhaust stuff here that's the drive shaft for the Astri all my steels the 6 liter for the 67 Firebird this here is all my specialty tools so I know where they're at mufflers for the Astri parts that I've ordered for the Astri. So this is kind of the setup for now. And here's the star of the show. So that's pretty much where I had left off in the video. Just adding this so Bubba can see it. But uh, I wanted to get some different views on it. So I think at the eye view you might have to move this steering column up a little bit. But um, we'll get the dash and stuff in first and see. But this kind of gives you the view from the driver, what the mount looks like. So, again, I'm very happy with it. Might move it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to cut the braces that hold the steering column at the bottom to the pedal assemblies. And so I can tweak it around a little bit. But... Um, I think that's a good start. So the next thing to do is the transmission mount. So I designed a transmission mount when I had everything centered. Now that I have it offset, this doesn't work. So I'm just cutting the sides off, as you can see here. And then I will make new plates, because now everything's easy with the plasma cutter. Make new plates. Weld those on now that the engine and transmission and rear end are aligned. And we'll get that done today, and that's where I'll start the next video.